The time has finally come that we are going to talk about Pythagoras' theorem, and this is part one. And you will notice that Pythagoras' theorem will return in all sorts of forms and questions in the future. And therefore, it is a really important topic that you understand um, properly uh, what you have to do. And we all can because it's fairly straightforward. What do we use it for? First of all, yeah, we use it to calculate, yeah, to find lengths in right angle triangles. Okay, so we are really only talking about right angle triangles, which is or which are triangles with one angle of 90 degrees. Yeah, can a triangle have two angles of 90 degrees? By the way, no, you can't have because two 90 degrees angles will add up to 180 already, so you don't have anything left for the third angle. But anyway, that's besides that. Pythagoras theorem we use for right angle triangles to calculate lengths. All right. So, for instance, I know that if this length is 3 centimeters, and if that length is 4 centimeters, then I can use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the length of that side, which is going to give me the answer, and I'll show you later how, of 5 centimeters. And so we're talking about right angle triangles, and we are calculating lengths. Now, I'll just, I'm, just, I'm just going to give you the, the theorem already. Yeah, I don't get scared now. It says a to the power 2 plus b to the power 2 equals c to the power 2. And that is Pythagoras' theorem. And you are going to use this on so many occasions. And you're going to thank Mr. Pythagoras for it because it is super useful in all sorts of questions in the future. Now, what are a, b, and c? a, b, and c stand for the sides of the triangles. Eh? You have three sides. Yeah, A, B, and C. Now, for right angle triangles, there is one side, let's call it a little bit extra important. Yeah, and that is the hypotenuse. We call it the hypotenuse. And what is a hypotenuse? That is the side across the 90 degree angle. We call that the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. Yeah, that is the side of a right angle triangle across the 90 degree angle. You understand that? Okay, it's always the longer side of the triangle as well. Yeah, and if you are looking at the theorem of Pythagoras, the hypotenuse stands always for C. Yeah, so that will be my C, and the other two sides are my A and my B. Yeah, or if you like, you could say, well, I call that one A and that side B. As long as you call the hypotenuse have the longest side across a 90 degree angle, the C. Okay, that is important. So at the beginning of these questions, you have to make that decision. What is the hypotenuse? Which one is the C? All right, so I'm going to show you uh, an example question now um, where I have a right angle triangle. Uh, this is the same example as we just did, three centimeters and four centimeters and they're asking me what is the length of x okay right angle triangle um calculating the length so we use pythagoras and we write down a squared plus b squared equals c squared the hypotenuse squared i'm going to put that equal sign there already because before i start i determine which side is my hypotenuse which side is across a 90 degree angle is that my four is that my three no that is my x i'm going to put there x squared and then it really doesn't matter my a or b four squared plus three squared equals my hypotenuse squared 16 plus nine have huh? four times four plus three times three equals x squared that is 25 equals x squared so x then will be the square root of 25, which is 5 centimeters. Yeah, so the answer is 5 centimeters. Yeah, and that's what I said before already. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagoras theorem. Okay, I'm going to have a couple of videos on this theorem where you will uh, exercise to identify the hypotenuse. We're going to do that in the next video. So we're going to really identify which side is the hypotenuse because sometimes those triangles are rotated and you just got to be careful that you always identify the hypotenuse being that side 
across a 90 degree angle. So we're going to do that in the next video. In another video, I will prove this theorem. I'll show you why a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we'll have some example questions. All right. I hope to see you at the next videos.